Welcome, I ask you for your attendance. Pray that you'd be able to come to, come with us again. Please remember to keep all of our Bible school teachers, missionaries, those conducting online Bible studies, our first responders, medical personnel, our, our local governments, and our national government in your prayers during this crisis that we're seeing, that we are in the midst of. If you have any electronic devices, please turn them off or mute them. We ask that if you have any change in your phone number, your email, or your home, home address, please let the elders know or let the office know. We need to, we need to be able to, to stay in touch with everybody during these rapidly changing times. Please remember to keep the, the uh, sick and the shut-in and those with ongoing health problems in your prayers. There's a complete list in the announcements. You can pick one up on the way out. There will probably be some further changes in the next day or two. Please pay attention. If you receive a call from the phone tree, answer it and, and heed its warnings. There, there will probably be some changes in the next day or two. I'd like to explain how we're going to be doing the bread and the, Lord, and the fruit of the vine different this evening. You all already should have that a combination. After the prayer for the, uh, for the bread, if you'll peel the top part off and go ahead and take the bread, and then uh, we'll come back up and offer a thanks for the fruit of the vine, and then take that. And after that, well, we don't have the collection that's already been done back there. If for some reason you forgot and you, you brought your contribution, but you didn't put it, there's a basket back there at the back. On the way out, there's a basket on the, on the, on the ledge back there. If you take your emptied cups on the way out, and deposit those in those uh, baskets back there. We'd appreciate that. If you would, bow with me now and we'll open our service. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. We thank you for your grace and for your love and your, for your mercy. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins when we ask for it. Thank you for all that you do for us every day. In Christ's name, be with us as we worship. Be with all those that are watching as this is streamed, be with all, we pray that you'd be with all those of, of the uh, family of God that are watching, streaming from the many different congregations. Thank you, Lord, as always. Mostly we thank you for your son's sacrifice on his, on his behalf, we pray. Amen. We're going to sing number 438, 438, redeemed, 438. We're going to sing verse, verses 1, 2, and 3, all three verses. Redeemed, I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed to His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me to continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. 
number 257. 257. I need thee every hour. We're going to sing all four verses, and after this song, we'll be led in prayer. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh bless me now my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose that power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need thee, oh bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. I need thee every hour, most holy one, oh make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Bow with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have this opportunity and privilege to be able to meet with our brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you on the first day of the week, whether it be in person or whether it be through uh, the uh, streaming on uh, televisions uh, and computers. We know that you love us. We know that you will take care of us. And we pray that we'd always put our trust in you and to, and to know that you will always watch over us and take care of us. Because we need thee ever, we need thee every hour, and we know that you love us every hour. Watch over the ones of us that are sick in this congregation of uh, things other than the virus that's going around. There, we have lots of people who are are out with uh, back surgeries and other kinds of ailments, the regular flu, and uh, even pneumonia. And we pray that you'd watch over the elderly. That's home watching us today, we pray. Pray that you would, everyone would be able to stream the service uh, and be able to be successful with that. Watch over uh, the ones that have come back to us from the field, from the mission field. Robert Martin, uh, who has come back a little early uh, from a trip, and now he is quarantined at home. We pray that you would watch over uh, Robert and watch over Mary and Maria as they tend to him. Uh, we pray that you would, uh, this, after this 14 days is over, that Robert will be healthy and well and be able to come back with us uh, as soon as he can. Uh, also for our minister, Steve Weiss, uh, who's been in New Zealand, and we pray that since, and he is now home in, in self-quarantine and good health, and we pray that he would remain in good health, much over uh, Pam and Rebecca, as they take care of, of Steve. Uh, we are disappointed that, that Steve and Kathy could not make their trip, but everyone understands that it's going to have to be when the, this virus is over. And we have several missionaries 
dear Lord, that, that love you and go to the field for you. And uh, we pray that you'd continue to watch over them, uh, watch over Randy English uh, as he is in Arkansas now, but getting ready to go back to American Samoa whenever he can. We especially uh, want you to be careful, be mind, we're mindful of Rebecca and and uh, the Shanahan's, uh, Rebecca and Scott Shanahan, that uh, it seems to be uh, a little bit worse there in, in Italy. And we pray that uh, you would watch over, especially the members of the church there. Pray that everyone would would uh, uh, get well and, and that there would be no more uh, episodes of the virus and slow it down as much as possible, if it be your will. Pray that we would pay attention to the the authorities, if they, they have asked us to separate from each other physically, and that we would abide by that and slow this virus down. Uh, we pray so much also for our first responders, uh, that uh, several of them are members of this congregation, with David Brown and J.D. Branch, Theo Williams, uh, that are regular members and faithful members of this church. We pray that you be with them because we know that they are out every day in this, and that they would not... Uh, uh, can, uh, uh, not be affected at them. They would not bring that virus home to their family. Uh, those of, of the ones also that are in the medical uh, profession uh, uh, be with uh, Tamika Yancey as she is out every day and, that, and she is home right now under self-quarantine. Forgive us from our sins. Help us uh, mainly, uh, dear Lord, other than this virus is going around, we're mainly concerned with our souls. We pray that uh, this message this morning, that we would accept it and watch it and also do everything we can uh, to do uh, our Bible studies and to pray and to always be, you would be always be mindful of us. We pray we would always be mindful unto you. Uh, bless the speaker of this hour and that uh, we would be attentive to this. Forgive us when we fail you, dear Lord, because we fail you so much. Help us and, and watch over us and keep us. These and all things we pray. Through your son's name, amen. Number 159, <clears throat> 159, we will sing this song to help prepare for the Lord's Supper. And for the Lord's, Lord's Supper, <clears throat> we're only going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Verse 1, 2, and 3. 1, 5, 9. I gave my life for thee. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou given for me? My Father's house of life, my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for me? I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left all for me? I suffered much for thee, more than thy tongue can tell. A bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell. I born, I born it all for thee, what hast thou born for me? I born, I born it all for thee. What hast thou borne for me?
<clears throat> Our scripture <clears throat> is taken from Isaiah 53, verse 9 through 12. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, verse 9 through 12. <clears throat> And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. And when you make his soul an offering of sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. <clears throat> and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, by his righteous servants shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the, with the great, and he shall uh, divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. Let us pray. Our mighty and loving God, our Creator <coughs> and our dear Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this bread that represents your Son Jesus Christ, body on the cross for our sins. As we take this bread, let us do it in a manner that is acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the cup. Lord God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, 
to come and suffer and die for our sins. Thank you for this cup that represents his blood shed on the cross for the remission of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The song before giving will be number 159, 159. The same song, but we're going to sing the fourth verse, the last verse. And I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free my pardon and my love i bring i bring rich gifts to thee what hast thou brought for me i bring i bring rich gifts to thee what hast thou brought for me The scripture before our giving is taken from 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collection when I come. Let us pray. Lord God, most holy and loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the physical and spiritual blessings you grant to us every day. Especially we thank you for our health, for making it possible for us to come out this afternoon to assemble here to worship you on the first day of the week as you have commanded us. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us with better health. Keep us strong. Let the elders use the funds collected in a manner that bring honor and glory to your name and spread the boundaries of your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 120, give me the Bible. 120, give me the Bible. We will sing verse 1 and verse 3. Verse 1 and verse 3. Give me the Bible, stop gladness gleaming, to cheer the wonder, lone and tempted stars. No storm can hide that radiant peaceful beaming Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost Give me the Bible, holy message shining Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way Precept and promise, law and love combining Till night shall vanish in eternal day Give me the Bible, all my steps in light, and 
Teach me the danger of these realms below, that lamp of safety or the gloom shall brighten, that light along the path the peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining, thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, small and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. If you'd like, you can go ahead and mark the invitation song. It'll be number 702 that will, after the lesson. I appreciate the opportunity to deliver the lesson uh, this afternoon. Truly unprecedented times that we're in these days. And most certainly, we need to lean on the Lord more so now than ever before. Um, I do appreciate this opportunity to deliver the lesson. And what I would encourage you as I do so, don't just believe what I say or any other preacher would say, but search the scriptures for yourself so that you may know what is being said is indeed coming from the word of God. And the Bereans did this in Acts 17, 11, and they were given praise for that. So I'd most certainly encourage you to do the same. Um, no coincidence, but um, I always try to keep a lesson ready just in case um, maybe it's needed. And looks like today it is. Um, I'd like to deliver a lesson to you today on um, tragedy. And in the midst of tragedies, most certainly God is trying to tell us something. And it's up to us to take time to think about our lives, take time to contemplate the lesson out of it. Many times out of struggle and adversity, we have those opportunities to most certainly take in personal inventory of ourselves and to improve ourselves where we may need to. And um, I'd like to uh, present a lesson to you along those lines today. Um, the idea is that um, life is fragile. Our time for service to God is limited. Our time to deal with sin is also limited. And that there is a life to come in which there is no tragedy, but only victory. So those are the points that I want to make tonight. And um, many things in this world and can make it a place where tragedy can most certainly happen. Um, we're all familiar with this coronavirus going around. It started out, you know, we heard it on the news overseas and maybe it wasn't a big deal for us and then it continued to grow and grow and grow and now literally it's in our very backyard and here we are. Um, human selfishness, uh, freedom of choice, natural law, those things can also bring about tragedy. Far too much tragedy in the news. Of course the virus is taking up the oxygen in the room so to speak but Many lives have been cut short. Um, the lives of travelers having accidents, um, the lives of school children, things like school shootings aren't really being discussed as much at this time, but we, we know those things have happened. Um, the lives of some of the best and brightest that our country has to offer have lost their lives. Many of us musicians that we've grown up listening to or celebrities uh, passing away. So all of these things are adding to the mix. God expects us to learn from tragedy. And most certainly, something is, he is trying to tell us something. Um, there's a warning in tragedy for those of us maybe that have lost loved ones, those of us that remain, there's a serious lesson for us to think about at that time. Um, there's motivation in tragedy. Sometimes you have difficulty and it's a highly motivating factor to improve yourself. And there's remembrance in tragedy. Many times when you have difficulty, 
it brings about that introspection or self-reflection on your life and how you're living and maybe you need to reassess or reevaluate how you're doing things on a daily basis but nonetheless all of those things should give us pause and opportunity to take self inventory the first point life is fragile according to James chapter 4 and verse 14 life is like a vapor scripture here says whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that is he appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away according to first Peter chapter 1 verse 24 all flesh is like grass for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away and we see this every day in nature we have no idea what tomorrow may bring and truly with this virus situation if that's ever a true statement I don't know another time that is um, look at Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 1 Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 1 scripture here says boast not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth and truly even our world leaders all over the world are reeling nobody saw this coming and um, truly the Bible is accurate in this in this case we cannot control the length of our days according to Luke chapter 12 verses 19 and 20 Luke chapter 12 19 and 20 here's an account of a a rich fool and I will say to my soul soul thou has much goods laid upon laid up for many years take thine ease eat drink and be merry but God said unto him thou fool this night thy show thy soul shall be required of thee and then who shall those things be which thou hast provided so we don't know what a day is going to bring. With this idea of the fragile nature of life and mind, the next point is that our service or our time for service to God is limited. Again, our time for service to God is limited. Consider the parable of the talents. We've all heard it in Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Just to summarize, you have three men that have been given different amounts of talents, five, two, and one. And in this case, it's money, but literally the word talent is an ability. And all of us have been given a certain measure of ability. Some of us can do things better than others in certain areas and vice versa. We've all been given a certain measure of one or the other and we should use whatever we have been given um, the five and the two talent men invest their their talents given to them and they make more and the one talent man is afraid of losing it so we hide his and gives it you know back to his master um, all of us have been given talents and opportunities and we need to recognize them for what they are how do they say in um, the world of um, fitness use it or lose it you know that's something to keep in mind um, the reckoning will come all too soon look at um, verse number 19 in Matthew 25 after a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them so the day of reckoning is truly coming and I hope it doesn't take a virus or situation like that to make us realize that one day we'll all stand before God in judgment um, have you dealt with faithfully with the Lord has entrusted you with have you dealt faithfully with what the Lord has entrusted you with look at verse 21 and note the reward his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. 
and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So we most certainly want to utilize fully all of the talents and abilities that God has given us rather than like the one talent man and just hide them away and not use them, maybe out of fear or whatever. Um, that's what you want, or will you find yourself in the last day trying to make excuses when the Lord comes? Look at verses um, 24 through 30. Then when he had received the one, then when when he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put thine money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury or interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And ye cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So literally he was cast into outer darkness for doing nothing. In God's eyes, doing nothing when you were supposed to do something is equal to doing something that you were not supposed to do. And that's something to keep in mind. Inactivity is just as bad as doing something wrong. Because in this case, he didn't squander it. He didn't make a bad investment out of it. He just didn't use it at all and he was cast into outer darkness. So that's something for us to consider. Um, with that thought in mind, have you taught that neighbor that you live near? Have you uplifted that brother or sister that was maybe down in some way? Have you supported that missionary in a far off land? Have you relieved that widow or orphan? Have you visited that sick person or shut-in person that you were meaning to? Do your children remain untaught? Have you studied the Bible? Do you attend service? Or will you simply have to say, well, I was going to. I'm going to get around to it. Maybe tomorrow. What are you doing with your time instead? And that's something for us to really think about. If we're not putting God first, what is it that we're putting in front of him? And whatever it is, we need to make adjustments for sure. When your time comes to an end, there's no better way to be found than being busy doing your duty in service to the Lord. If he came right now, it wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, we're here trying to worship him, and that's a good thing. But maybe if we were out and about, you know, taking up some hobby or something like that, when we should have been in worship, or maybe if you were, you know, at some ball game or something, you'd probably be trying to crawl, you know, under the seat and hide. Well, you don't want that situation to happen. So you want to be found busy, being busy and doing busy God's work, and that's a good thing. Life is fragile. Be found doing your duty. Another thing that God teaches us about the fragile nature of this life is that our time to deal with sin is limited. Again, our time to deal with sin is limited. We absolutely must deal with sin. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everybody's in that quarter category. All, not some or a few, all have sinned. So we all have to deal with this. And as it was read actually a little bit earlier in the service, sin separates us from God. 
according to Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You don't want to be in that situation. There are terrible consequences that come from failing to deal with sin. Look at Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15. Scripture here says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, and from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And all the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The dead, the small and great, the wealthy, the famous, all the way down to the homeless person, you know, under a bridge. Everybody's going to stand one day before God in judgment. And we need to deal with sin now while we can. Good news. A plan has been given for dealing with sin. It's better known as the Great Commission. And you can find it in a couple of places. In Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, it speaks about salvation. In Mark chapter 16, verse 16, it speaks about repentance and remission of sins. And in Luke chapter 24, verses 46 and 47, it speaks about repentance for all nations. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall re receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Turn over to Acts 3 and verse 19. Acts 3 and verse 19. Scripture here says, Repent, ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out with the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And then turn ahead to Acts 22 and verse number 16. Acts 22 and verse number 16. Scripture here says, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. Wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So there is a plan that's given for sin. However, it must be acted upon now. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I mean, look at just a couple of weeks ago, you know, things were just clicking along. And here we are with a global pandemic now. Well, what's the next day going to bring? No one knows. No one, it's not guaranteed. The present time is always stressed in scriptures. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 concerning salvation and maybe when it should be dealt with. Scripture here says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It's now. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. It's too late after we die. At that point, time's up. It's too late. Hebrews 9.27 And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So whatever you need to take care of, it needs to be done on this side of that judgment. Once you get to that point, 
your fate is sealed, good or bad. Look at Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. Luke chapter 16 and verse 26. This is an account of the rich man and Lazarus. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. This is a conversation between the rich man and Abraham. He's trying to relieve himself, but he's told, no, there's a gulf between him and where Lazarus is in paradise, and there's no changing that situation. It's like standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon and wanting to get to the other side. You just can't do it. You can't do it. So whatever needs to be taken care of, it needs to be taken care of on this side of eternity. The saddest thing about a life cut short is that there is no more opportunities to obey the gospel. Imagine this scenario. Children who were prevented by their parents because they were too young and never getting a chance to respond again. Of course, the age of accountability, if a young child doesn't understand what they're doing, then they don't qualify. But maybe if they have an interest, let them come forward and let the elders talk to them and to sort of sort that out and tease that out and see if they understand what they're doing. And if they do, they're a candidate. And if not, maybe they need some more study. But we don't want to get in a position where we're just preventing them because what if they never get another opportunity? So the best thing we can do is teach them and show them what they need to know. And Lord willing, they'll make that decision in their own mind and heart. And we don't want to be in a situation like that. Um, I wonder how many have said, um, I'll repent tomorrow. You know, I'll do it tomorrow, the next day. And then the Lord says, like in Luke chapter 12, verse 20, Thou fool, this day thy life is required of thee. There are people that have actually died from this coronavirus and probably didn't even know it was coming, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. And there's no rhyme to the reason exactly. You know, I've heard of older people, you know, succumbing to it, younger, you know, and all type of age. So it doesn't discriminate. So we don't know when our time is up. And we just need to take a moment like this to just reconsider how we're living. God is trying to tell us something in tragedy. His lessons of motivation and warning have been given. Yet there's another message a message of hope and victory. And that is that there is a life to come in which there is no tragedy, only victory. And what a wonderful thing, given all of the doom and gloom and things that we hear on the news. Um, let me let the scripture speak at this point. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. Scripture here says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and, shall, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying which is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18.
scripture here says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and shall remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And turn with me to John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Scripture here says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare, to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. What comforting words in this time. And turn with me to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. Scripture here says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are all passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give to him unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What wonderful, comforting words in a very tumultuous world and situation that we're living in at this time. I appreciate your attention to these important matters. In conclusion, um, how we are affected by tragedy depends on us. Like someone once told me, you can't control what happens to you, but you surely can control how you react. Look at Job chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. Job chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. Not too many people have went through as much personal adversity as Job had, but here's how he responded. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came out, came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And that was his response to about one of the greatest tragedies that could happen to a man recorded in the Bible, save the crucifixion and you know, and difficulty that Jesus Christ himself experienced. Are we hearing the message of God in tragedy? Do you realize that life is fragile? Do you know that your time for doing God's will is limited? Do you know that your time for dealing with sin is limited? And have you been reminded of the life of victory to come? In order to partake and claim that life and victory, you of course need to hear the gospel according to Romans 10, 17. 
and you need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, according to John chapter 8, verse 24. And absolutely, you need to repent of sins, according to Luke chapter three, 13, excuse me, verses 3 and verse 5. And then confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, like in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And then be baptized for the remission of sins, like in Luke, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And then you can become a Christian and then walk on your way towards that victory, remaining faithful all the days of your life. If you've already done that, but have fallen away, or went by the wayside, or have let something else take first place in your life, there's also a plan put in place for that. According to 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, Scripture says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God has made a way for us to repent of our sins and confess them and be made right with him again. If you have a need of this invitation to either obey the gospel or to pray forgiveness or you simply need the prayers of the church, come now while we stand and while we sing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sins we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Good to see everyone today. We're, we will, for our closing song, sing number 46. Blessed be the tie that binds. And before we sing that song, we'll have a closing prayer. Let's pray. Our wonderful, almighty Father in heaven, we are so grateful and thankful for being able to worship you today. Father, we thank you for the freedoms that you have blessed us with for so long in times like this makes us think about those things and to be reminded of how blessed we are and have been to be able to come to Bible class and worship freely and we pray Father that the situation and what's going on in the world and in this country can change so that that can be able to happen again very quickly Father we thank you for David and his preaching your truth and help us Father to look at our lives and remember their brevity and that we will serve you to live in accordance with your will each and every day father we thank you that you love us we thank you that you have given your son to die for us 
we thank you, Father, for the hope and peace that you can give us, especially at times like this. We pray, Father, that your will may be done and the things that you know are best in the world and for us in our lives. We pray that you'll be with us and, again, to remember those that are sick, that you will be with so many throughout the world that are sick, so many that have lost loved ones, and may all of us turn to you. Thank you for hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. It's in Jesus' name that we offer this prayer before your holy throne. Amen. Number 46, verse 1 and verse 4. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. When we are sundered, part it gives us in with pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Just a reminder as you leave, please remember to keep about six foot between everybody in the building and 